Hello everybody, this is the Capless Games and welcome back to War Thunder 101. Today we're gonna look at the differences between the factions in terms of ground forces. So I'm going to do American, Germany, British, uh, Soviet Union and Japan. I'm not gonna cover Italy or any of the planes. And just go over the different uh, lines of research. First off is the Americans, since they're most left. And we're going to start out with the left line and then go to the central ones, so towards the right. And I'm also going to mention a few special things in uh, detail. First off, we got our light tank line. With most the most important ones is probably are the M5A1 Stuart and the M22 Locust. This is all light armor or tank destroyer style, uh, glass cannon style. Uh, later on it's glass cannons and first off it's just the faster light more lightly armored vehicles the um, unarmament for their tiers were rather low or you have just a 37 millimeter cannon 2.3 battle rating up to 76 at, uh, at 6.3 where you can otherwise find a 90 millimeter cannon so the unarmament is rather light but you do have high speed in return next up is the medium tank line with the most uh, notable ones are the Sherman uh, M4A1 and the M26 Pershing and M46 Patton tanks. This medium tank line is your all-round basic tank line. Uh, as you can see, I have not advanced that one that far. I am actually working on getting first getting my jumbo tank, and then I'm gonna go into the this line. I want to get a 76 millimeter Sherman tank up which is going to boost my line up 4.7 these tanks are your workhorses if you, ca uh, you can never be wrong with one of these tanks with average mobility, average armor and average firepower next up is the heavy tank line you're going to start out with a light tank and a glass cannon tank destroyer and after that you're going to get a medium glass cannon and after that you're going to get your heavy tanks the most notable ones are the jumbos and the T-34 heavy tank. These tanks are your heavy cousins of the medium tanks. Uh, they are slow but they are very 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 good in survivability. For example the Jumbo at 4.7 battle rating and has a insane insane armor rating. If you go to the armor you got uh, actual two plates of 63 and 78 degrees and if you look at this armor, it's already around a 100 millimeter, and then another 50 millimeter. So it's almost 150 millimeter of frontal armor right there. And at the tier 4.7, nobody's gonna get through that. Later on, it's not that bad, and they're not that good. But the jumbo definitely is one of the best heavy tanks out there for its battle rating. Even though its cannon is underpowered, since the cannon is something you can meet even already at 3.3 battle rating. It still is a very good tank. Next up is our um, uh, self-propelled anti-air line. These things are your solution to anti-air targets. The most notable ones are the uh, M16 and the, um, I would say the M163. The M16 gun motor carriage is a quad uh, heavy machine gun carrier. Uh, two battery better rating. You can if you're lucky. Uh, shoot at the side armor of normal tanks, but these things are really are meant for air targets. The M163 is your top tier one, with a better rating, with a 20 millimeter Gatling gun. Next up is the tank destroyer line. The tank destroyers of the Americans are, you should treat them to like light tanks, but with better cannons and lighter armor even. I mean the M uh, M551 Sheridan still has some decent armor. This simply because it's very slow. But these things really have no armor. You should uh, always be the one that shoots first. The most notable one is the M18 uh, gun motor carriage or the M18 Hellcat. As well as uh, the big exception of this rule is the T95. There's also one medium tank in this line. The is the M60A2. Uh, Starship, or it, yeah, it's the M sixty eight two Starship. That's the big exception. But uh, first of the M eighteen Hellcat is the spam 
a vehicle at 5.3 or around 5.7 battle rating for the Americans. This is the most used tank because it's basically armor often is neglected in this game. It's often not powerful enough. For example, the jumbo is an exception because it can tank shots a lot. But the M18 um, is the exception of where they threw away all armor and give this thing a hell of a lot of speed and a very good cannon for its tier. Because of that, um, the fact that most people don't really use that heavy tanks, they find this thing extremely useful. And the other one is the T95, is the exception to the rule that armor is not um, very handy. It's a 6.7 battle rating outdoor tutorial. It has a 305mm and 292mm frontal armor. Well, and <laughs> you're not gonna get through that. The uh, premium cousin, which the one I caught, is the T28. It's even better because it's 6.3 brittle rating. Still the same frontal armor, only has thinner side armor, that's the only issue. You're just not gonna pen this armor. <laughs> they're very, very powerful. But uh, in return, these things are the slowest, one of the slowest vehicles in game, with only 12.8 km an hour top speed. For the premium lines, I am gonna note out, point out a few ones. Cobra King. Cobra King is simple, a normal jumbo, but premium, so you can earn more silver lines as more research. You cannot get it wrong if you get this one. It's a really good tank. You've got the T9, uh, T29 uh, heavy tank. It has the same gun as the T28 and T95, which is an extremely good gun for its tier at 6.7, and has overall good armor and mobility. Those are the two most notorious ones. You also got the Super Hellcat, is an upgraded version of the normal Hellcat. It's basically a combination of the turret of the uh, Jackson and the body of the Hellcat, because the Jackson has the turret of the uh, Wolverine, uh, actually has the bottom of the Wolverine. Uh, but the Wolverine uh, or Jackson is slower than the Hellcat, so the Super Hellcat is basically a combination of the high mobility and the amazing gun at the cost of even higher BR rating. Next up is Germany. Germany has uh, some pretty interesting playstyles here. First up, we got our, uh, our light tank destroyer line. Most of these vehicles are open topped. And they're basically our glass cannons uh, of the USA line, but these things most of the time do not have a turret. So you have to watch where you are positioning them. The most notorious ones are probably the Stream Panzer II. Uh, it has a 150mm heavy infantry gun capable of one-shotting pretty much anything at its tier. At just 2.3 battle rating. And it can be used at even... 5 or 6.0 and still then it will have a gun that can then it still has some decent penetration values and able to penetrate most targets. Uh, the other very notorious one is the Flak 88. It's a giant bus with a big anti-air gun on top. Uh, it's the earliest place where you can find your 88 mm your high tier 88 mm cannons or 90 mm or 85 depending on what country you're in. So, it's a really good gun. But in return you have this giant target. You cannot fire forward, you can only fight so, uh, towards the side, so it's pretty much a broadside gun. And there's no armor, pretty much. Next up is the um, medium to heavy tank line. It starts out with the Panzer tree line. And after that it goes to the Tiger line. Uh, the most notorious ones are the Tiger 1 models here which are your heavy all-rounders one of uh, uh, one of these spam tanks again but then for Germany our Tucker 2 and of course the mouse the mouse being the uh, heaviest tank ever created until today with a 128 millimeter gun which is the biggest one of its time and a secondary 75 millimeter gun which might not pack that much of a punch at this tier 7.7 .7 battle rating but it still is nice to have against lighter tar armored targets. Next up is the medium tank line. Uh, you gotta start out with the uh, first uh, the Panzer IV, with the most notorious one, the Panzer IV F2. F2 modification gets the long KVK-40 L43 cannon, 
and that was the KVK-37 cannon. The KVK-37 has a very short barrel and has a very short velocity, so you have to lob the shells a lot. While the F-2 version has a high velocity cannon which is ca uh, capable of destroying most targets at its tier in one or two shots. After that we got ourselves the Panthers and the Leopard tanks. The Leopard tanks are said to be one of the best tanks in the game at uh, uh, BR 8.0. Because, again, they embrace the hit-and-run tactics, light armor, high mobility, h good gun. And, well, there's nothing really more to say about it. They're, sh they're just one of the best tanks in the high tier. Next up, we've got our anti-airline. The most notorious ones are going to be actually the Flak Panzer. The Flak Panzer, at 1.3 battle rating, gets a 20mm Flak 38 cannon, capable of penetrating pretty much anything it sees and it's tier. And it's just going to flop 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 gonna shrek the target with 20 rounds in one clip so actually it's just such a rapid fire can you can enable most targets before you have to reload and um, the whirlwind whirlwind is a four belt version of the same flag gun although well it's a modified version this flag actually no they're both the exact same gun these are flag 38 both have the exact same gun this thing is based on a body of a panzer Four. And well, it also has extremely good anti air capabilities because they're 20mm shells but they have a very high rate of fire. Next up is our light tank to uh, heavy tank destroyer line. The Germans do not really have normal light tanks, but these are the, just a handful of them the Panzer 35 and 38Ds which are actually weren't German in the first place. They're actually Ch uh, Czechlovkian's tanks. But next up we got our Stooks, uh, Jagdpanzers, uh, Panther, Ferdinand, and Jagdtiger. Most of these tanks here are basically one of the medium or heavy tanks, of which the uh, top has been taken off, the turret, and then replaced with a normal uh, uh, Casemate style gun. For example, we got a Panzer Volkswagen Porsche Tiger. If you look at this body of this curve, how the body exactly shapes here with the curve at the front and the two big plates. If you compare that to the uh, Ferdinand right here, if you peer view it, you can see this thing with the two front plates, same side armor, same f hull, but instead they get uh, instead of it having so forward, it went backwards and they mounted this giant box of armor in front of it and behind that they placed this giant uh, long barrel 88 but instead of the shorter 88 gun so they upgraded the gun other one that's very notorious here is the Yak Tiger is based on the Tiger 2 and it's also packing the A Hornet 128mm gun same as the mouse and it's just a beautiful gun it's extremely powerful, but these are the. At some point, you're gonna. Uh, at 7.0 or plus, you're gonna s get to where you have the uh, Cold War tanks, and you are still in your World War II tanks, so. And uh, they're not great. Anyway, for the um, premium lines, I wanna point out first the Panzer 2H. The Panzer 2H can be bought together with the Outflowering Panzer 38T in a Steam pack for $10. It's a very cheap uh, pack. And you get yourself this awesome Panzer 2H with the 50mm uh, Pac-38 cannon capable of one-shotting pretty much anything. This is basically your 2.3 two, uh, two battle rating Hellcat or Leopard. And I absolutely adore this thing. It's tiny, cute, uh, but it one-shots pretty much anything. <laughs> Next up uh, for the more notorious ones are the KV-2, stolen one. KV-2, the Derp gun. It's glorious. And it's German. You basically get the normal uh, version of the KV-2, but you get uh, some frontal, extra frontal plating, a new co cupola, and um, that's about it. Standard paint job is different, but after that you can you can unlock the same paint, paint job as the normal KV-2. Uh, other notorious one is the RU-251. In my opinion, one of the most imbalanced tanks in the game. If you look at this gun, the 90mm BK-90 gun, and at its speed at 80 kilometers an hour, at uh, 584 horsepower at 25.5 tons, this thing is fast. 
and this thing has a good gun and it has a turret and if you look at this thing with the same 90mm PK-90 gun without a turret with 70 km an hour with the same weight but only 442 horsepower this thing has 7.3 this one is 6.7 yes this thing has 50 to 50 mm of armor and this thing has three, uh, 30 and 20 but if you go for two modifications to this thing look at the gun 320 millimeters of penetration having a 20 millimeter extra armor isn't really gonna matter here with this heat of shell even though this uh, Jagdpanzer 45 if you go to the modifications it gets a AP APCR shell which the RU251 has not but it's only 271 millimeters of penetration then you can better use the heat FS shell although the heat FS shell does take is rather expensive to use but uh, if you uh, buy a vehicle for what 40 to 50 dollars you're not really gonna look at that money rating other ones um, Tiger 2 SLA is also a good uh, one but since the RU251 got added it's much better Panzerprofils wagon it's a funny thing but nothing really important there next up are the Russians Russians I kind of got a hole the holes here in the research give one s uh, second T28, a second T34. I got your uh, tank destroyer. I can unlock this one without having these two. It's kind of a mess here in my research tree because I actually researched a lot of these vehicles before others were added. But first off, we got our light to medium tank line. Uh, ends up with medium tanks. Uh, most notorious ones of these lines are the PT7. A very fast tank, one of the fastest at its tier, with a pretty good gun and decent armor. And next up, we got our T34s, T34 57s, T34 85s. T34 85 at 5.3 Brader rating is another spam tank. T34 85 here uh, with the Sys, uh, Sys S53 cannon, another spam tank. You're gonna see these ones a lot. Next up is our heavy tank line with the KV-1s, KV-2, KV-285 and the IS series. The most notorious one is probably the IS-2 and the KV-2. The KV-2 is the big derp tank with the 152mm M10, uh, M10T howitzer. Capable of one-shotting everything but at the cost of having almost 45 seconds reload. It's taking, a <laughs> taking ages to reload this thing and if you somehow do not kill your enemy in one shot you're dead yourself. And then you got your IS-2, almost impenetrable mm, if you got some lucky matchmakers. Uh, the entire front is very bouncy, has a tendency to have the enemy shells go where the enemy does not want them to go. Here, uh, they're very very good gun uh, tanks. Next up is our uh, light tank destroyer line and light tank line. Here we got a handful of light tanks. Or tiny troll, the ASU-57. If you, if I uh, pick it up, let's see where, where do I have it. Here we go. This thing is tiny. I mean, look at this T-34, and then to this ASU-57. This thing is smaller than your average light starter tank, but it packed a 57 millimeter GA-51M cannon is strong enough to defeat the armor of a Tiger 1 with its standard high explosive uh, sorry armor piercing high explosive shell it's adorable it is nimble it has good firepower but it has no armor to be exact six millimeters this thing is so light size four millimeters a rear and open uh, top open this thing can be defeated by light machine gun fire. You really have to watch out when you do this this thing. Because if you don't, you're dead meat. Anyway, back on topic. We also got your PT 76B, which is an amphibian wi amphibious vehicle. Uh, ASU 85, which is the big brother of the ASU 57. Object 906, also amphibian, if I'm not mistaken. 
These things are nasty. These things are nasty because they're such a low profile. Now, right next up, we got our heavy tank destroyer lines. With the actually one exception is this thirty six thirty. This thirty is the um, derpy brother of the um, ASU fifty seven. This thing has one of the highest velocity cannons in the game. Fifty seven millimeter sys two cannon. At two point three better rating, it one shots anything. But in return, it has no armor. Ten millimeters uh, crew two in the rear, which can be just shot down by machine gun fire. Two internal. This thing is gonna hull break a lot. And uh, next up, we got our S heavier SU series, SU eighty five, SU one hundred fifty two. ISU 152, SU 100, these things have powerful guns in a casemate. The casemate is always going to be the issue because you will you have to turn the entire vehicle in, in order to fire, and if somebody flanks you, they are gonna probably going to shoot the engine. And if, you're, if your engine is shot, you cannot turn. And if you cannot turn to fire your gun, you're just target practice. So you really have to watch out your placements and you make sure you do not get flanked with these things. You do get the IT-1 at the end as the missile carrier with the 80 gems, one of the most overpowered vehicles in the game currently at 8.3 battle rating. Next up is our anti-air truck milk or milk truck base with the t most notorious ones, the 29K which is a tank destroyer similar to the flak truck with a 76mm uh, 3K cannon. And or Shilka ZSU 234 with the quad 23 millimeter chainsaw guns. I would say 850 shots per minute. Those are a lot of shots. Anyway, for the um, premiums, no. Uh, one of I want to point out is the ZUT 37, which is a 37 millimeter anti-air vehicle. It has a 37 millimeter auto, auto cannon at 2.7 battle rating. It only has solid shells, but it functions similar to the um, Panzer II and the Flak Panzer I at the German line, but at a higher battle rating with a better gun. Also, other one is the BM-30N or the Katusha truck. Although this one is not obtainable anymore, it was uh, obtainable just for a special event where you got a BM-824, which is also technically a Katusha tank, but it's worse. It has 82 millimeters instead of 132 millimeter rockets, and it's generally not just a, not a very good tank. But you get that one for an hour, and you had to get uh, what was it, 10 kills without dying, I think. And then you would unlock the PM 13N, but currently it's unobtainable. Other ones are the SMK T35. Uh, these are multi turret tanks. They're pretty interesting. Uh, we also got here we got our KV26 Z6. The six six uh, Z6 gun also has a very slow reload at 20 seconds, but this thing is nasty in terms of penetration and destructive capability. It's a KV2, but then with a sniper gun instead of a normal gun. It's nasty, very large. Uh, the most notorious one, although on this one side is the IS-6, 7.0 battle rating. It's almost invincible at its steer. Frontally, you have a very low chance that it's actually going to get penetrated. Why? The frontal sloping. 65 degrees is going to bounce pretty much anything. On top of that, the effective thickness is 253 millimeter. Here, oh, more than 300, even less of a chance you're going to hit it. The only real chance what you got here is hitting this straight part right here between the two black dots where you got only 160 millimeters or managed to snipe the frontal parts right here. The cupolas with only 100 millimeter but they're very very hard to hit. Those are really the only options to kill this thing. I mean this might be 100 millimeter but uh, there's a 150 millimeter plate behind it. And this top part is gonna bounce you a lot. The bottom part is actually gonna bounce you pretty often as well. Just you have to shoot right here or right here. That's the problem with this thing. I mean even the side armor is still pretty damn tough, 45 degree angling. 
once he jills like this, you're not really gonna get through here. You're, the only actually way to get through here is get through the side like this, but then you would have to be pretty much sideways or shoot the side of the turret. But yeah, front really only this part and the front of the turret rings. Next up is the British. British line, first up we got our light to medium tank line. We have the most notorious ones, I would say the Sherman Firefly, which is a American Sherman tank, outfitted with the 76mm QF 70 pounder cannon, which is a very, very powerful um, cannon. I have to say, the downside of the... Um, I, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about uh, advantages, disadvantages of every faction after this, but um, it's only solid shots. Only solid shots with our with the uh, entire British line. They never bother to put high explosives in the shell. They only use solid shots, which is a very big power. Another notorious ones are the Centurion line. The Centurions are very very good all around tanks as well. Medium tanks, you can always rely on them. Next up is our heavy tank line. If the most notorious one is probably the Churchill Mark 7. 4 bits have a better rating, 152 millimeters of armor. This thing is very similar to the Jumbo in terms of survivability. But this thing has a similar gun, but only has armor piercing shells in Brussels, instead of armor piercing high explosive shells like the Sherman. So both have 75 millimeter guns, but this thing isn't that great in terms of the gun. Uh, we also got the Vickers MBT. It has paper fin armor. Mobility isn't great either. And but this gun, it fires with only 6.5 second reload. It's just kind of boom, boom, boom. It's just kind of fire almost endlessly. And also the fighting vehicle 4202, also a really powerful gun with the 20 pounder, 84 millimeter gun. Again, solid shots only. So the 20 pounds solid shot they refer to. These things are some insane tanks. Next up are our first our slow medium tank line to the um, tank destroyer line. The tank destroyers here, most of them are turreted with the exception of the Tortoise, the uh, FE 4005. The Tortoise is your British uh, Doom Turtle. Also has extremely thick armor, 215 here, 200. 15 around here as well. It only ha it has this weak spot right here, even though it's 75 millimeter slope. If it gets an angle on it and you penetrate, you are gonna disable its um, transmission and possibly the ammo, but it pr most likely just the transmission and you're gonna immobilize it. This thing is faster with 90 kilometers an hour, which is decent, I guess. Also, if you're gonna shoot this thing frontally, shoot the cupola right here. It only has 100 millimeters of armor, 25 at the direct front. It's not really great in terms of armor. Or just kind of snap, slap those sides because there's no real other way to kill this thing, I'd say. I mean, you're not gonna penetrate this 170 millimeter plate or this 200 millimeter plate. Not really that much of a chance. 203 here. bonus armor around the gun. You can also try to shoot this part right here, right the around the machine gun. But it's only 150, 160 millimeter. That does help. And lastly for the no uh, very notorious ones here is the fighting vehicle for the 105. This thing has pretty decent frontal armor you'd say. 150 millimeter armor, 110 millimeter armor. Side armor, eh, even 50 millimeters. Until you look at this goddamn turret. Yes, you got the structure. The, you got the gun breach, 60 millimeters of armor, but the entire thing is 40 millimeter, 14. Heavy machine guns, auto cannons. Everything goes through here. Okay, in return you get this 183 millimeter QFL 14 cannon. Which is, with one an exception, this thing carries a uh, hash shell with 254 millimeters of penetration with an a TNT equivalent of 16.26 kilograms. This thing is just gonna nuke you. 
entirely <laughs> by one shot. But again, you have this giant freaking turret, and it's gonna be penetrated. It is gonna be penetrated, and well, turret, it only has Nimitz firing angles so like 45 to 45. You're gonna actually 180 this turret. That's a bummer. And anyway, next up is our uh, self propelled anti air. We got our uh, the most notorious ones are the Crusader Mark A A, -A Mark uh, One and Two. Pretty funny. The Mark One is deemed better than the Mark Two. Mark Two uh, has two 20 mm autocannon Mark Two 20 mm autocannons, while the Mark One has a 40 mm Bofors cannon. The Bofors cannon far slower than the 20 mils, but has a bigger punch. Uh, these two are modification of the um, Crusader Mark II and Mark III, which is a actually a pretty nice light tank for your scout line. I still have to unlock my Mark III version, but I actually am busy unlocking my Crusader AA Mark II. And for the premiums, well, there aren't for that many premiums. The British line is actually relatively new. We got our Far Far Scorpion, which is basically another Sherman Firefly with premium earnings which is really really nice and it's gonna help you unlock your medium tanks and then you got your SDRV-81 uh, which is a Zeturian Mark III armed with three uh, robot F-5280 uh, GMs the ADGMs are um, guided by WASD so your keyboard Makes, which makes them hard to aim, but they come up and then go down again and go f roughly where you aim them, so at sh medium range, you can guide them without much effort. Finally, we got ourselves the AC4 Thunderbolt, which is an Australian tank, which is actually a really oddly shaped obnoxious tank here, as you can see. <laughs> this thing is trolly. This thing is going to bounce a lot. It's a 67mm top place, you do have, do have this weak point right here, but this thing is pretty trolly if it comes down fighting from range, and it has the same 70 pounder gun, but at 5.0, so only 0.3 battle rating higher than the Firefly or normal Scorpion. We also got the Achilles, which is the um, M10 Wolverine, but armed with the 70 pounder main gun instead of the 75mm uh, main gun it got right here or 76mm M7 cannon I mean 3 inch gun this is uh, same hole but different gun and finally we got ourselves our Japanese line I have to say I hardly any uh, played any Japanese I still have to unlock my first tank hero but let's go through this line first up we got our light uh, tanks and tank destroyer line which uh, the most notorious ones are actually non uh, Japanese uh, tanks. First you got the three normal Japanese tanks and after that you got a American M24 uh, M American M4 A376 uh, M uh, American M41 A1 but after that you got the most notorious one of this entire group is the Type 60 self repelled recoilless gun. This thing features not one but two 106mm recoilless rifles that um, fire a heat shell with 381mm of armor penetration at 6.7 battle rating. This thing will go through anything and you have two shots so boom boom and you penetrate. Turns out you only have 10 rounds for the two guns together. So a total of 5 rounds each which is not that much. Next up is our medium tank line. A very, very uh, balanced line. These are relatively lightly armored but have powerful guns. They should be treated similar to the um, American tank destroyer line. Although these ones have worse mobility. They have uh, similar guns, but in comparison lower VR ratings, so they, in comparison they have better guns, but worse armor and, mobil and uh, worse mobility, armor is pretty much the same as the American line, not really thick enough to be good I would say. And next up we got our tank destroyer line, 
starting out with the most notorious one, the Type 4 Hogro. A 150 mm Type 38 howitzer at 1.7 battle rating. Another one shot machine at the low tier. Again, limited traverse uh, very slow reload, 26 seconds. It's actually pretty funny, this thing first, when it came out, it only had 7 seconds reload. On a 150mm gun that's one shot at pretty much anything, at a tier where everything else has around 5 second reload. So, if you survive, if you fire the first shot, at a group of 2, second one reacts, they fire your shot, and their shot, and if you are lucky enough to survive, you can fire your second shot, and kill the second target. Got our Honies and the Nato. The Nato is probably the most notorious one for the higher ones. It is a track platform, but it's formed like a truck with a 75mm Type 5 cannon. This thing should be treated like a high velocity, like a better 75mm cannons or 76mm cannons, similar to the Sherman style gun. It's a really, really powerful gun. But you don't have any armor, and the mobility is very bad on this thing. Next we got our anti-air line. Here we got actually got two stolen vehicles pretty much. We got our American M42 Duster and a German um, Jepar or Type 87 self uh, SPG 2035 mm guns. This thing is pretty much the same as the uh, Flak Panzer 1 Jepar. The same guns, same armor, same everything. And that's about it already. These, the M42 Duster is the same as the newer M42 Dusters. You do have these three normal ones. You have to say, the jump in tiers here is a little bit weird. 3.3 battle rating right here. Jumping to 6.7, you, you do have a large gap between the normal SBAAs and then the high tiers. But that's it. Let's go to the premiums. The most notorious one, I would say, already is the heavy tank no six or number six uh it's basically just a tiger tank for Germ uh, for the japanese line and it's gonna help you to grind up pretty much everything for this thing let's go to chino 2 chino 2 has a very good gun and well you should treat it like an armor chinu, but then with a better gun, same as a Cheeto. And just pretty good gun at the cost of armor. Cheeto has better armor than a Chinu. And better mobility. But you got that gun at 6 PR lower, 0.6 PR lower than the you would normally get it. And we do have some tanks that have multiple cannons, but they're really, really bad. This thing has a 1 or 2, uh, tw 120 millimeter gun, but this thing has one issue. 30 millimeter of armor penetration only at 1.7 battle rating, and most of the time already that is not enough. You really need to be lucky with your gun, if you're, uh, or if you're going to be able to penetrate or not. So, if you're going to buy a Japanese one, either buy the Chinu or uh, the Heavy Tank. Because these ones are all too low to be grinding with anyway. And I do advise actually the Sherman, because the Sherman, uh, sorry, the Tiger, the Tiger is a really, really good tank. It's a spam tank, and you can sp then spam it by playing with Japanese. The downside is of this tank is that you do not have anything else to complement your lineup. You do have two 6.3 vehicles. Uh, and a but the other one is a 5.3, so you do not have anything in that group. For the Chinu, you do have 3.7 right here. For you do have 4.3, 3.3, another 3.3, another 3.3 that complements it slightly better than the heavy tank. You can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tanks that are semi good on this tier, or 4 if you do not want to go up tier any uh, further. Pretty well for the heavy tank, you can only find. One, two, three tanks, and then you have to be forced to be up tiered. Or all four with the with this tank, but you are gonna be forced to be up tiered like that. Anyway, going for the general advantage disadvantage, uh, American is a good all rounder. 
they got yourself your very light vehicles, you got just they got the very heavy vehicles, they got the balanced vehicles, they got pretty much anything. And they're not really that hard to use and I generally enjoy the playing with them. Germans, they got your very heavy slow vehicles with very powerful guns. And if you're a fan of non turreted vehicles, you should definitely go for this one because this one has two tank lines with casemate tank destroyers. And you got yourself your snipers and stuff like that in this tier here as well. Um, Russians. Russians are extremely good at terms of armor and firepower, but they have a few flaws. For example, none of these guns have good um, gun depression. Minus 5 degrees. Minus 5 degrees. Minus 5 degrees. Even at here, minus 3 degrees. Minus 4. Even the IS-6, minus 3. Well, if you, for example, could a look at the Tiger E, minus 8. Tiger 2, minus 8. Tura Mill, minus 15 even. I mean, if you play with your Russian tanks, you generally have an issue when you go up a hill that you cannot fire until you are on the other side of the hill. And in the meanwhile, you're going to be very, very vulnerable. Because if you cannot fire until you're on the other side of the hill, the enemy gets 4 or 5 seconds while you descend on that hill before, or before you can fire, for them to fire. Yeah, British, British have um, no hitchy filler in the round, so it takes a lot more time to uh, shoot uh, to kill the enemies. In return, they do have quicker reloads, but generally takes longer in a British tank to kill an enemy. And uh, Japanese, Japanese, they lack armor. They do not have anything that can take a solid shot or two. Everything in their lineup is glass cannon. If you cannot play with a glass cannon, a fast one or s uh, slow one doesn't really matter. But if you cannot play with a glass cannon. Do not play Japanese tanks. I personally advise going either for the Americans or Germans first. Try it out. If you want to go and try with these tanks, I sh uh, strongly suggest for in the Ameri uh, German line to grind at least to the Panzer IV F2, Panzer III L, Model III H, and uh, for anti air, the Flag 37 truck. These four tanks, if you grind to at least two of these tanks, and one of those being the F2, you can get yourself a solid view of what um, tank ground forces are like, especially for the German line. You can just, you can only grab a few of ones of these, and then if you have enough of them, you can simply, you know, I advise actually getting first getting these tr three, so you can actually unlock these, and then these two. You can pretty much ignore all the other ones because. As soon as you unlock the next tier, you can skip everything here and here and here. But I strongly suggest grinding to at least the F2 because it's a really, really enjoyable tank. If you're gonna decide for going for the American uh, side, so or the Allen side, I mostly suggest grinding up until the M4A1 Sherman, M4A3, 105 millimeter, uh, basically yeah, what I call the artillery Sherman. And the M10 uh, three-inch gun motor carriage. The M4A1 or M4 here are good all-round tanks, and the M4A3 is a slow-firing glass cannon at its tier. The M10 is your light armored tank destroyer. I do have to watch out everybody for the M10. It has a very slow turret horizontal traverse, so you probably have to turn your entire vehicle in order to aim someone at a relatively fast speed. That's sad. I want to thank you all uh, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, I will be back later with some probably some gameplay of War Thunder with me playing the T28 here. Because I want to take it out for battle and I want to show you guys what I do with this thing. That's that. It was the Gaplice Games. And I will see you guys all later. Bye bye.